Hello, everybody, and welcome to this talk as part of Architecture Kerry 2022. My name is Carlo Mahoney, and we're going to have a look at County Kerry's remaining thatched heritage. This survey was carried out over the summer months this year and was funded by Kerry County Council and the Heritage Council. What we focused on was traditional thatched buildings which still have thatch as their visible roof covering. So we set aside any modern buildings or buildings that might be traditional but that have been very heavily adapted to such point that there is little of the original left. Um, we'll have a look at about 10 cottages and we'll also have a look then at some opportunities and issues that arise. Firstly, let's take a brief look back. <clears throat> we don't want to be focusing on uh, lost heritage from a long time ago, but um, there's a range of pictures here from the 1950s, courtesy of the Kennelly Archive, which is a, a very valuable resource. Um, the point of looking at these is just to realize the variation in material fixing methods, details, and crop that's covering the roof, depending on where you are in the county, depending on the local farming and the landscape. Um, you'll see there in the middle, there's what appears to be, if we were to zoom in on these, you'd see uh, that probably is grass, grass or rushes there. There'll be a lot of straw in this, and there'll be some reeds as well, and differing there's interesting character there. There's nice shapes. You'll see that everything isn't perfect and prim and proper. Um, and one thing to note is that you will see little or no decoration in the traditional rural thatched house. They're modest labourers' dwellings, and that is their character. Okay, so starting, we'll head north towards Valley Longford. <clears throat> A lovely large farmhouse here. Uh, recently retached in Water Reed, uh, a block ridge, which is what you see there at the top, a uh, kind of proud, upstanding ridge with some decoration on it, introduced for the first time. Um, that would not be a typical uh, rural detail in Kerry or Irish cottages, typically. Um, and we'll see that as we go along, there's there's different thoughts about um, whether you do that or not. What I would say is that conversation needs to be had between homeowners, catchers, and maybe funders that are involved. Um, top left, you see an image there of the house with a flush ridge previously, which personally, and that's that's a, just a personal feeling, I think it's, it's a stronger identity on a rural house when you can appreciate the overall roof um, rather than details of the roof um, taking precedence. I should say that we shouldn't be overly worried about the detail of, I mean, the, the fundamental thing here is that the house has been retached and it's been retached on an intact historic roof. So the ridge we're looking at there might last 15 or 20 years. The ridge will be redone during that period of time. So. Uh, choices about ridges um, ultimately are more short-term fashion, whereas really what we want to get at here is maintaining these buildings and keeping their roots on. Uh, this house has a nice interior. It's a semi-formal farmhouse interior, some nice woodwork, lovely dresser there you'll see in the pictures. Um, and just to introduce in Kerry how the roofs are built. You see the picture at the bottom here is the exposed roof structure over the stable, typically in the living areas of houses. Over time, the roof structure and the scrawls, the scrawl layer would be boarded or covered up. So you typically don't see it exposed. People would remember maybe one in room of a house having exposed or, or that um, as things progressed, it, it became hidden. You'll see it in outhouses. So what I'd say is that across Kerry, over the survey in every house that we saw or had information about the original roof, 
it was always a timber structure with scrawls above and then your your crop layers above that typically straw that does differ in other areas in the country um there's not always a straw there and i think it's relative to your ground i guess Kerry has enough middling or foreground uh, where turf would be cut and you'd have that type of landscape just to explain what the scraw is the scraw is the top layer of the ground that would have been taken off anyway before turf is cut so with uh, flat spades um, you're cutting the top two inches or more off the ground it's rolled up like a carpet and then it's uh, rolled back down over the roof timbers um, and it's overlapped and that becomes uh, it's it's the roots in that top layer of ground that bind it together and once that dries out it becomes a very solid um, first layer that then the scallops which are the hazel rods that tie the straw back into everything grabs into that and it holds the whole roof together everything is tied with the, um, with the help of the scraws so that is across Kerry what we saw everywhere. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we're heading out to Dingle Peninsula. This at Dealish is the only house, the only fully attached house that remains on the Dingle Peninsula. This was the house of a well-known local character, Tweedy who was a master of many crafts, including patching. Nowadays, um, the later generations of the family have renovated in recent decades, and it's a great example of a house that's brilliantly comfortable, very cosy, but does maintain its character. There's a beautiful floor there of Valencia slate, uh, modern slabs, which some of which are eight and a half foot long, and there's underfloor heating under that. Um, a really lovely floor, which you know repeats the tradition of flagged floors in these cottages. Uh, traditionally, here in this area, it's close to the coast near Castle Gregory. Um, this would have been reed always because it was it was right close to the house. In actual fact, there's reeds growing behind the house. Um, so that was the situation and the coast was actually much closer in previous times. Also on the Dingle Peninsula, listen agree. Um, a cottage that still has a fairly intact interior, which is really lovely and very well maintained, um, a really lovely character to it. Um, this was a shop in one end and latterly has been a, a house of music. Um, Oskelga um, on the Dingle Peninsula or elsewhere, I mean, the, the word for tach is kian tui, literally a, a head of straw, which I like and is a, a very good translation for the feeling that people that are intimate with detached houses have it's like a a straw hat and that reflects very well the way the straw roof pulls down low over the walls and the fact that so much of the outside area of attached house is the roof and the insulation and comfort value from the wind and rain and exposed areas that that gives so um it is a nice translation you see some nice uh aggregate there on the floor, the local beach stones, the sandstone showing through. And in this house also, there's nice pebble work in the heart. The, this is slightly unusual. Um, this house was retached. It had lost its thatch in the early 1900s. Um, was The whole roof was, I'd imagine, taken off then. And what you see there is uh, a roof from that time, a nice sturdy roof boarded, and then it would have had a felt covering on top, which was fairly typical around the Dingle Peninsula. Um, the same belt that would have been used on uh, burrocks. So um, in recent decades, the thatch was reintroduced on top of that roof. The roof was maintained in place and that roof does give a lovely character internally. 
Okay, now we shall move on and head to Gorta Kapo in near Cordo. This is a, a very original cottage with a, a very long history. Um, it can be traced back into the 1700s. It was a, a Shebeen stop on the Butter Road to Cork. It also acted as a safe house during the Troubles. Um, it has a, a long history associated with the family that still care for it and uh, keep the fire lit and maintain it. Um, it's described by them as a warm house, um, which is good to hear. It has no central heating. It is a, a traditional cottage that still works well, that keeps the heat. Its chimney is still open as it would have been traditionally. Um, so it's good to hear people acknowledge that these houses do work well when they haven't been messed with. Um, you'll see a lovely distinctive dresser there, um, which was either made in this house or if not, immediately outside or across the road, the carpenter that made that lived um, literally a stone's throw directly across the road. Um, so that's a 1950s dresser with some nice green glass touches and complementary uh, green handles. Uh, you see the sketch at the bottom of this house. Um, to the left, there's a temporary steel roof over that, which has been there for a good few years now, but which was a good move on the part of the owners when some um, a roof timber failed and there was a bit of a failure in the thatched roof at that end. So when it was difficult to get thatchers or to get that fully repaired, they um, themselves were able to go in and put up some steel legs so that that roof flies over. Um, and protects that end. So um, that's good work there on, on their part. Okay, now to heading to North Kerry, where most of the houses are clay or cob walls. This house at Leanna Moore um, is a great example um, to show people what can be done and to show the relevance right now of these houses and their value, actually. Um, top left, these uh, custodian, custodians started out with what you'd find typically, um, a cottage that's been messed with PVC windows, lots of sand, cement plaster, um, concrete paths all around, just heavily lined in hard materials that while people meant the best and were using the latest technology, do not work with the nature of these houses, are not breathable, and lead to water issues, damp issues, mold issues, and a feeling in a house that is just not positive and the air is not good. So they started with that, and I have the word restored up there, um, because I really mean that in this case, it's a brilliant restoration. That word is bandied around, and sometimes painstaking restorations or so they're said of cottages, unfortunately, um, mean the opposite. They involve huge loss of original fabric, loss of the roofs, and all you're left with sometimes is the walls. And in a way, your outcome at the end is not hugely different to some modern buildings. But in this case, uh, the historic roof has been maintained. There's been uh, patience and care. Um, you see the photograph on the left there, the second one shows uh, new timbers introduced to strengthen the roof uh, where required without taking out the original structure. Um, so that's not your mainstream building work. You need careful approach and one size does not fit all in these situations. But when the will is there to step carefully, um, you'll see that has been done there. The scraws and the original battens and roof structure is in there but it's strengthened to uh, to bring it onwards. Uh, the All the materials here are um, have improved the house, but done in a breathable way. Lime plaster has been reintroduced outside. Um, there's uh, hemp, insulated hemp plaster internally. There's uh, recycled newspaper insulation in the roof space. Um, and People's budget does need to be judged so that, you know, it goes 
into the things that matter that are technically correct so that you have a long-term house that will work properly. There isn't a new extension on this house. There isn't underfloor heating. Um, from memory, I think it's radiators. So there are judgments to be made, but firstly, you need to get it technically correct so that the house will work right, heat right, hold the heat, feel comfortable, and above all, be healthy. And I envy people that have the opportunity I've put in the work um, without much assistance, um, just having to get on top of learning everything themselves, find ways around um, grant issues, insurance issues, and all the issues that arise at the moment, probably in many cases unable to get mortgages because of the nature of the house. Um, but I envy people that have the luxury of moving into a renovated cottage like this because this is bulletproof. It's long term, it's healthy, it's sustainable um, beyond many modern houses that are being built at the moment. So it's it's brilliant to see. And let it not be said that these houses cannot be relevant for 2022. The new egg, a small cottage um, that is said to be centuries old. Um, our, our records normally go back to 1840, the, the first uh, OS maps, and many of most of these cottages will appear at that point. Um, but oftentimes you'll hear local folklore or memory that a house would go back much, much further. Um, records are sparse, so it's hard to pin that down. But this is a house that was known to be much older. Um, it was saved by the community as a community space and for music events and festivals. Um, the Sean McCarthy Festival happens here. Um, the roof was unfortunately lost to fire after a great restoration, so it had to be renovated again. Um, it has a lovely Ordnance Survey crow's foot mark there visible on the, the corner in the village in Inuig. And just a general point um, on the issue of fire. Um, which sometimes can be overstated, um, but it does need to be said that the chimneys and the chimney structure and old chimneys are a risk and they're hard to get at sometimes. Um, you need tradespeople and um, historic masons and stuff to be able to get stuck in and get at the chimney, whether that be clay mortar, brick, there was even timber chimneys at times, to, to get in there and check the lining and check the condition of the chimney because over the centuries, um, cracks can appear, soot can work its way and heat can work its way through cracks. Um, and that's often in places that are unseen and that's the risk. Um, the chimney needs to have maintenance and full careful inspection um, periodically. Okay, so let's um, continue on. Okay, so not an Arnie, that's a mouthful, but this is Chapel Town near Phoenix. And this house has been worked on over the last two years. Again, brilliant to see uh, work happening and houses being well cared for. The detach is distinctive. Um, and this shows the, I suppose, skill of a thatcher who <clears throat> came up with a solution to save the house. The, the roof was really needing attention and it's a very large roof, both in length and height. So the budget adds up. Um, patching is not cheap, um, is hugely labour intensive, um, not to mind the, the materials. Um, but what has happened here is the Thatcher has um, spread out the materials in a stepped fashion uh, so that it's about half the materials that are used and it's about half the labour. Obviously, there will be a, a reduction in the length of time this thatch will last, but it wouldn't be 50%. So where budget is not available or is limited, um, this is a way of going in and laying a layer on the roof that will get at least 10 years out of that. Um, so I, I, in, in the world of Thatching and Kerry at the moment where everything um, for good or bad has ended up 
looking very similar because it's all the same material that's being used. Um, I actually like the fact that this has introduced some intrigue and diversity for a period of time at least. This is a great house. Uh, it's a very important heritage roof, this one. It's a large roof. Um, it's all intact. Um, and this is a good one to look at just to show you um, what these roofs are like. So it's the original roof structure is largely of unsawn timbers. That's basically straight branches off a tree. Um, so if you look at this third picture up here, that's looking upwards at the ridge. Even the ridge is a uh, unsawn branch. A lot of it is burnt. Maybe there's ash in there as well. Um, and the scraws, then the turf layer um, pops over that and is supported by that. The little arrows you see popping in there, that's the end of the scallops, which are the hairpin, hairpin branches that are used to tie the straw in and they grab into the straw layer, which is, I guess it's it's knotty and solid. So that, that's how they're held in place. Um, looking down at other pictures of the roof, um, you'll see there the, the ropes, they tie the scrolls onto the battens. The battens in many cases here are also unsawn rough timbers, uh, lots of character in there. Um, the ropes, Sugon ropes, you'll see a detail there on the right hand side. What that is, is same as the roof came off the land, it's straw. So the straw was uh, laid out and uh, twisted between two people um, facing each other. And it was, you see that rope there is made up of three smaller twines. So you twist each one and then maybe three of them, if you want the rope of this side, would be twisted together. And it's said, it's it's not only said, it's it's easily checked. These are very, very strong. And a rope like that is enough to pull a cart behind an animal. So uh, perfectly natural, been there for potentially 150 years and still doing its job and holding the whole roof together. Roofs like this don't conform to any modern convention. They're a living, dare I say, moving, changing thing with the roof, you know. You need people that are familiar and not scared by these wonderful roofs to, to look at them and make recommendations. Otherwise, there can be huge loss. The Thatcher, Thatchers are generally very familiar with the other traditional crafts of uh, plastering and lime craft and um, carpentry and roofs like this. So part of a Thatcher's job is to be aware of the roof structure and assess that and they, they'll develop a feeling for it. They'll be on the roof. They'll know where there might have been a dip over time. They'll go in. They will, um, if there's a bit of strengthening needed somewhere, they'll add a bit here or there, you know. So it's it's like it's like music. It's you do need someone with a learned and experienced feeling for these places. The trusses in this have been assisted over time. There's a later truss added next to most trusses that's called sistering. So it has a sister truss. Um, they are, I know they're later because you can see that they are sawn timbers. That would have happened because the roof as it builds up throughout its history gets a lot more layers and obviously becomes heavier. So the roof as the thatch is changing over time. The roof structure is all also um, adapting over time. Okay, so that gives us a good idea of what these roofs are like and um okay let's let's move on okay so to inch west another uh, recent and ongoing renovation again uh led um as is generally the case by uh, an owner having to teach themselves um, the subtleties um, of traditional construction and cottages. Um, not because people want to do that, but because they find themselves in a situation of deciding to save a house and it not being mainstream construction and a lot of the uh, systems and uh, such being unfortunately unsupportive of this kind of work. Um, there was a good conservation aware contractor on this job, there was a conservation architect involved 
um, for some input at the start, which was a good steer and introduced some good moves. Um, so again, this is a house that I would say, you know, it would be beautiful to be moving into it. It's a luxury and will perform far better than many houses that are being built even now. Um, I, I know that in in all technical aspects of it, once a house is redone fully, there's great air tightness. The, the roof has huge insulation properties. A clay wall, once it's dry and working well, has brilliant insulation properties that are not acknowledged um, in building regulation terms. Um, the windows on these houses are generally small, so you have a very uh, good ratio window to wall. Um, you know, in, in all ways, and, and this has been fully renovated, uh, underfloor heating, breathable concrete floor, uh, walls done, everything done to the latest spec, but being appropriate to a traditional building. Um, there can be, a, I suppose, a perception or a danger that people feel enclosed in these traditional cottages in a, in a uh, with a lack of light, but in this case, an opportunity was taken uh, where there was some previous messing on a rear wall there was a concrete portion which was tending to fall out so the opportunity was taken to open a nice picture window there looking on the field so there is with the right um, design and creativity there's always options to adapt these to the individual uh, owners the move was decided here not to put on a modern extension and to respect the traditional form uh, the hipped end and the simple linear linked strong form of the house and I, I think that's that's lovely um, and again by not extending out yeah, the, the budget is is focused on getting stuff technically correct and working well for the long term in the house and again very healthy you can feel it when you go into these houses that have been done with the right soft uh, textured materials breathable materials it's just a different environment it's hard to explain but it's a lovely environment to be in <clears throat> the roof was replaced in this case. Um, it wasn't a roof of unsawn timber, so who knows how old it was. It was, it was sawn, but um, there was, a, I suppose, a analysis there between the client, the builder and the thatcher. That dialogue does need to have to happen. And, you know, it does come down to the point of looking at things closely to see what can be saved and what cannot be saved, depending on the work required and the uh, actual condition of it but that's important rather than people being afraid of traditional roofs that they cannot see and being presumptuous that a roof has to be lost um, and that a modern roof is automatically better which is not the case okay uh, again a block ridge on this one which is the current style and a very uh, sharp prim and proper reed roof Um, and a very, uh, a very nice project. Okay, um, I should say also a, an important aspect of this. Um, this house is partially mud walled and partially stone. The stone seems to be on the prevailing wind side, prevailing weather side. Um, the builders and client here um, did a great job, went to the trouble of repairing like for like Walls were repaired by um, taking clay out of the site and building uh, clay blocks out of that. Also, there was one end had to be rebuilt completely, and that was built out of cob or clay on top of a stone footing. So that is um, very admirable, the, the work that was done there. And again, just to point out, there are people around that are making themselves very informed and able for this kind of work. Okay, we shall continue our tour. Corbally is a unique house and you will see just from the pictures there, it's um, different to anything else that remains in Kerry. This, I guess we could call uh, a strong farmer's house. It was originally so associated with a, a very large farm um, from loose memory, perhaps around 600 acres. Um, and interestingly, the house is known as Acres. Um, it's an unusual arrangement, have, has a loft both ends and has eyebrow windows both ends. 
uh, some adaptions over time. Um, but when I say again that this is an old house, this really is an old house. Uh, it's a small townland, and by looking at maps and what might have been in the townland in 1840, you 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 can pretty well be reasonably certain that there weren't other big houses in the townland. And if this house exists as a big farmer's house, and um, that this is probably the same one that's referred to there in the mid 1600s, uh, potentially as an old thatched house with two chimneys on lands at Corbally. Um, any house with two chimneys wasn't your run of the mill uh, tiggy at that period. And uh, seven, mid 1700s again, um, in the Trinity College estate maps, um, on whose land this was. Um, it says there's a farmhouse on it and it's well provided with fire and water. So generally any houses that were being noted um, in records um, were not insignificant. A lot of houses were so um, casual and transient that they wouldn't have made into any records and certainly would they'd have been lucky if they had one chimney. Um, certainly not two. Okay, Moher, a very special house um, that we can learn a lot from. Uh, history first, this was a stopping place on the road. It was known as, and is known as Shamrock Cottage on the main road heading out um, north of uh, Listowel, heading out towards uh, North Clary Valley Longford. Uh, this was a stopping point for tourists for many, many years. Um, I'm sure thousands and thousands of people have been in and out of this house. Um, the woman of the house whitewashed the the fireplace every single day, sort of pristine for the for the tourists. And it was a tea house at one point. It became highly decorative with plasterwork and stencil work and painting and cottage garden planting. And um, that is a, an interesting history. Uh, current generations of the family, um, similar to previous houses, are fighting the same battle in caring for their heritage on a phased basis as best they can um, and trying to find ways around the uh, significant obstacles that cottage owners find themselves faced with at the moment. Um, <clears throat> it's always good to start with the roof. This roof was retouched in 2018. Um, by the same thatchers that um, did some of the previous houses we looked at. Um, so it'll show you the, the ability and skill that's there. Um, you know, there's block ridges there and some, there's a beautiful flush ridge here. So the difference here is that there was very good dialogue, excuse me, <clears throat> there was very good dialogue between the custodians, owner, the thatchers and the funding authority, which, um, uh, perhaps Gary County Council, but I know the Heritage Council were involved here. So that discussion was had and the flush ridge here is perfectly appropriate to a small labourer's cottage. Personally, I feel that a nice shapely roof like this, showing a bit of shape, showing a bit of belly in the roof, that's the character. You know, sometimes when you keep the old roofs and keep the layers, there's, there's a bit of character that develops over time, depending on uh, what's happening in the roof depending on who's touching it and what, what uh, shape they give it. Um, you know, it's, it's a bit more characterful than perfectly flat um, plane of retouch. Um, by having a nice subtle ridge here, what it allows you to do, allows you to, especially with a lovely steep pitch here, allows you to appreciate the overall roof and its shape. It's like a lovely hat sitting on the house and the, the hat, is larger than the part of the house that you see typically in a cottage. So um, I would feel that being overly decorative, um, which dare I say some bling in ridges or places on the roof, personally, I feel that that draws attention to an area of a roof, whereas I think the beauty in these is the, the overall shape. Uh, okay, so that's... Uh, Again, on the roof, uh, an interesting story here. We it, it is said that, uh, and one of the reasons for preserving 
um, thatched roofs is that the amount of craft and skill over various uh, generations that's in them, including the thatch layers, the roof structure, the scrawls, everything, um, that there's stories and lots of history embedded in that roof. Um, this is very true here. And I, I went into the attic to, to check if it had its original roof structure, or at least the old roof structure, which it does. Um, I found a ball of newspaper um, that you'll see there on the bottom, which looked intriguing, um, tightly packed and tied with twine, but singed, uh, parsley burnt. So we took that out and we opened it up and did a jigsaw, um, trying to reveal what era it came from based on references and who Kerry were playing and whether or not they'd won the All-Ireland the previous year. Um, it turns out to be page one and two of the Kerry Man from the 9th of August, 1941. And after that, the client uh, told me that the Thatchers had also told her that they had seen something in the roof to indicate that someone had attempted to burn the roof. So it, it seems like these would have been burning balls that were probably stuffed up through the eaves um, for no good reason. We we might never know what the story was, but that date there, the client, the owner would also be well aware that this was a, for want of a modern word, a party house. It was a house of music, a house of dancing. It was a social place and it was a place that had the first gramophone in the parish. And this uh, newspaper is, um, I suppose, uh, uh, parallels in time with an era where the authorities that were and church authorities were trying to clamp down on uncontrolled house parties. Um, and they were trying, the Dance Hall Act was brought in to try and um, maintain some level of control over people's social activities by putting them in dance halls. So it is said that this might have been, this house may well have been condemned from the altar. Um, so again, we'll never know, but look, there's real evidence, um, not only from myself, but from the Thatchers also that there was interesting things here and there were certain attitudes taken towards the um, the fun and the life that uh, happened under this roof. Okay, so um, again on this, this is a very good example of um, successful Heritage Council funding. Uh, the Heritage Council ran a scheme around 2017, 2018, and hopefully they'll run one again um or attached heritage structures uh this house was in on that and because there was a spec or a guidelines and perhaps inspections at that time um that really helped the owners and they um through dialogue with their attachers and others they followed that to the best of their ability and i think the this just speaks for itself um you know a lot of what's happening in Kerry at the moment. Um, there's limited funding, limited grant, um, and in some quarters, I suppose, limited um, knowledge, and there's no specs guiding a lot of the work that, that's happening. So uh, things are happening in a void, um, whereas here's an example of a, a brilliant outcome. So that's, that's key. And it should be said also that what you're looking at here is Irish Reed, which is, normally a condition of those grants. Um, Irish reed varies from year to year depending on the season, but if enough people are demanding that that's what they want on their roof, it'll push the industry on to produce it and um, that's perfectly possible. Okay, continuing on, we shall arrive at Art Cullen, the home of a Thatcher um, who has been on roofs and traveling in Kerry and beyond since he was nine years old. So um, I can only acknowledge the depth of knowledge and skill um, that's there over a lifetime's experience. I, I meant to say at the start, and I don't think I did, that I am not a Thatcher. Um, I am not hugely knowledgeable or skilled in this area. Um, so I do fully respect um, people that uh, have skills that I will never have. 
Um, so I suppose what I'm doing here is I'm giving a broad overview as I see it of um, what I've seen and the state of play as I see it at the moment. Uh, and uh, while being respectful to the very specialized knowledge that uh, exists um, with others. Uh, this again taught to be a very old house, um, several hundred years old, um, at a on a rising road at a location known locally as Box Height. And you can see that in the elevation of the house where it kind of steps down along with the hill. Um, different people battle with different birds all the time. Um, in this area, there's tillage around. So the crows come in early morning and like to uh, pick at the roof. And the uh, owner has been an, having an ongoing battle um, with the crows. Okay, so we'll move on from Art Cullen. And I will briefly just pop out a few other cottages here that we won't look at in detail. Um, the yellow one there at the top is the Thatch Pub in uh, Ballydonoghue, North Kerry. Again, appears to be a clay wall building, as uh, I believe an old heritage roof in um, the other part of it. Next to that is Mary Rose Cottage in Corda, the very well presented. Uh, cottage that sits down there as well with a relatively flush ridge which looks great um okay over we'll we'll pop down to the middle photograph um that is Loch de Callow near Castle Main um a very well maintained nice cottage also nice interior um but it's here because I want to say that uh, you know these buildings you should never feel that they're limiting with the right um creativity and design and sensitive approach uh, you can always uh, make these buildings work. You have to pop out low if you're extending these, you stay under detached typically. But this is a nice uh, way of getting a, a nice room at the back, nice body room with decent height in it, you know. Um, and then down at the bottom there, you'll see Dina Lodge in the National Park in Killarney, an example of a cottage or the Victorian style. Um, there would have been various buildings like that in the county. That's actually the only one of that style left. Um, so not your not your farmer's rural building, but nonetheless part of our attached heritage. Um, popping over here to the left then is Tarman West, um, in a clay walled building uh, with its heritage roof, in a uh, very close to the Moher Cottage in North Kerry. Uh, nice shape to the roof, lush ridge, looks brilliant. Uh, beautiful overhanging, curved, hip, on the left hand side almost projecting a meter from the building, a lovely place to hang out under. And next, um, you won't have heard me speak about South Kerry much because uh, unfortunately there is so little left. I'm aware, I go south of Killarney, I'm aware only of two cottages and I, I'd love to hear of more so we can start um, uh, assisting people where that's possible and taking care of what's left. This one at the bottom is on Valencia Island, has been covered for a good while, but uh, the roof is there and the thatch is there. Uh, in this area, um, you'll see the picture at the top, which is the same house. The covering would have been grass or mountain grass and would have been uh, added to or renewed every year. And that, that was rope thatch, so it was all kept in place by crisscross ropes, which you can kind of see in that historical picture. Um, and then in this case of this house, they were tied down to projecting um, sticks or stones along the eaves line and uh, along the flat eaves at the front elevation. So exposed areas, islands, windy locations uh, did have rope thatch, and that's confirmed also on Village Island by the 1946 picture on the right, which uh, the ropes are not tied into the wall there in that case, but are using weights along the roof, um, like a nice necklace. You would love to see some of this uh, individuality and casualness um, reappear in our heritage buildings. Um, so to give to give a real depth of heritage. Okay, um, there's other than that in South Kerry, there's one other in Kells, um, but um, we've yet to find more. I'd love if there was others that I've missed. Okay, other aspects. Uh, grant availability. Uh, some of those that we looked at did have in the past benefited from Kerry County Council 
uh, conservation grants over the past decade or two. Um, and there are some in the county benefiting from that this year. There's some thatching happening. Um, those grants up to now have been for protected structures. Um, not all of these are protected structures legally or need to be either. Um, and that's starting to change. It is a problem. Uh, vernacular buildings are starting to be uh, much more acknowledged in government and heritage policy. Um, there was a new policy uh, published uh, recently on vernacular buildings, and there's a pilot scheme run for the last two years, I think, where that where some of the conservation grants uh, can be directed to non-protective structures. So that's starting to happen, but needs to happen to a much uh, broader degree. SCAI funding, oh, yeah, just uh, elsewhere on the funding, hopefully the Heritage Council who are working on all of these issues at the moment will be reintroducing some funding in due course. Um, and there, there's a relatively minor grant available from, I uh, believe, the Department of the Environment um, for most hatch buildings when they're being redone, but which doesn't involve itself in exactly how that's being done or whether it's a heritage building or not. SEAI funding does discriminate against traditional buildings. Um, it's geared towards modern buildings. The Heritage Council are well aware of that and have been doing some work in that regard. Um, but I don't believe there are any changes to date. So some of the houses you saw earlier there did have a heat pump put in. Um, existing house, typically, if you're putting in a heat pump and doing that amount of expensive work for sustainability um, and efficiency reasons, you'd get generous grants. Um, unfortunately, the people that do this in our heritage buildings um, don't get any assistance. And that is obviously something that hope, we all hope would be uh, addressed and more than addressed. Um, insurance is an issue um, and is one of the major reasons why people don't have the luxury or aren't allowed to consider, you know, the the extra work and the extra cost and the extra trouble sometimes that's involved in um, proper care of our heritage, which means keeping roofs, doing tricky work to keep um, old roof structures and straws and stuff in place. Sometimes it doesn't even come into the conversation now because people are seeing the big challenges, mortgages, insurance, fire risk, all of this kind of stuff. So um, I, I do say there that the insurance issue is a directly responsible for loss of many roofs in Kerry in recent times. Okay, and as I did mention, perhaps the Heritage Council are actively working on all of this. There's a steering group together and they're meeting um, at the moment and working through the various issues from uh, availability of thatchers to the materials, to growing of uh, the necessary crops, to insurance, to grants, to all the things that need to be grappled with. Um, that's a broad group. Um, ranging from building professionals to conservation um, architects to earth department experts to Thatchers to Thatched House homeowners. So um, we all look forward to seeing what comes out of that um, in due course. Okay. So let's take a look at oh yeah okay materials and labor which um obviously the heritage council are looking at as well everything at the moment I, I did skim over this everything at the moment in Kerry there's there's great work being done people are really going out of their way um with little assistance to try and keep their their ancestors houses standing and roofed um but because of the various challenges, it's one size fits all at the moment. Every roof I showed you there is reed. There is no variation. Um, traditionally, it would have been straw in most places in Kerry, um, which is a different look. It's it's fluffier. It's a little rougher. It's a more a rural landscape aesthetic. Um, 
the straw that's grown nowadays and stuff is processed in a way that does not suit a straw has to be particularly grown for thatching. Um, so we do need options. Um, people need to be asking the questions. They need to be looking for options. And I think also the whatever grant funding that will definitely have to be um, forthcoming, I think should acknowledge the extra effort of people that want to go and put straw back on a roof because it's it's more labor intensive so it it will cost uh, a bit more um it can't be said that this can't be done um it's happening in other places in the country um some beautiful roofs um straw has been grown in the last few years in the phoenix area uh, for thatching but it was for thatching in Leinster and the machinery required to harvest that and to bind it together without damage. Um, there are actually two of those and those working or workable in that area. So the knowledge, ability and the interest is there among uh, some of the Thatchers. And, uh, you know, we really need to open this up and give people options so that our heritage is not one dimensional. Um, two companies were touching and carried this summer. Um, both uh, hugely experienced and well able to do various different kinds and whatever they need to do and ask to do. Um, so that's great to see. I'm not sure if it's enough and I would be aware that uh, there are no apprentices involved as far as I could see at the moment. And one wonders um, whether they're there or where they'll come from. Okay, nice shape on the roof at the bottom right, 1935. Um, again, I suppose I'm trying to point to um, in the world of modern, straight, flat, um, prim and proper buildings. I think, you know, this character, which was obviously commonplace at the time, um, I think there's, there's a new attractiveness to that, you know, curves shapes everything not being perfect it, these are natural buildings so um you know let's let's throw some some shapes okay um let's a look have a look so where we're at the sketches we have been doing of each cottage which in themselves are lovely and this will make uh there's a work in progress um that's why you see the drawings to the right this will be a lovely end product and we were looking forward to doing that. But more importantly, the reason why I wanted to do this is to point out how, to point out the situation that we're in. Hopefully this is the low point. We're in a very critical situation, um, highlighted by the fact that all surviving traditional attached buildings in Kerry can fit on one page. Um, so looking forward, hopefully in some time in due course, I am forced to extend this page. I would love to have that problem of having to add to it to um, add a few more found or restored cottages, which, as you'll see in a minute, is perfectly possible. Um, not to underline the critical situation we are in, but um, looking at that there, there, I'm aware of at least eight cottages there that are inhabited or inhabitable, and I'm aware of eight that definitely are not insured um, because they don't have that option. So that is the real situation people find themselves in and the, and the situation that people put themselves in because they care about their family buildings and the heritage enough to put themselves in that uncomfortable situation. Um, I would also be aware that of those 24, 25 cottages that were, that seems to be our final number, I would be aware that similarly, there are only eight that I could point to there that have uh, what we would consider a heritage roof. Um, again, various reasons push people into the unfortunate situation that in recent times and recent decades, many of the roofs um, have been replaced with modern roofs. And while they, um, 
that's to be applauded. Um, it, there is a loss of heritage there and it is somewhat um, one dimensional um, when unfortunately you're forced not to have the, the real historic fabric of interest. Um, ta a tat roof is a sandwich. There's many layers. The upper layer is the most vulnerable and the one that will last the shortest time. But that's what we see and that's what people enjoy. Um, what we need to look at and appreciate is often the hidden parts, the, the amazing roof structures, the, the layers of um, previous crops, uh, which give insulation in between and which for other professions, botanists and that hold huge value in the amount of information about the local farming practice crops, how things were cut and all of that, the, the amount of information that sits in a roof is significant. So question is, where do we go from here? We go undercover. So this is a category of building that needs to be acknowledged and um, is actually reasonably widespread. It's hard to judge. They're hidden, they're in the back of yards. Um, so what it is, is in the 1900s, as thatching became less common, more difficult, farming practices changed. Um, many thatched roofs as a solution were covered with corrugated iron, a light timber structure put on top and um, corrugated iron added for the weathering. That worked brilliantly. It was easy to do, presumably relatively cheap. And you have a beautiful sandwich then that has amazing insulation qualities, um, sound and comfort qualities. Your um, historic layers of thatch are still there. Um, for every thatch structure that we looked at there, I estimate there are there's definitely several, there's definitely two or three um, covered thatch properties in the county, and it, it could be far more than that. Um, every place I was talking to someone about a thatch cottage, there would be reference to a few of these. So these, I would say, are need to be respected and given the same respect and assistance and grant um, funding as a visible thatch roof. Uh, because And there's huge potential here. Um, firstly, these need to be maintained as they are. They need to um, have a delicate hand when, when they need some repairs. Uh, they need to have their corrugated iron kept in good condition. They need to uh, close holes properly so that birds are not getting in and removing all the thatch. Um, and that will, and when water gets in, you see the picture, portrait picture there. I mean, that's corrugate starts to go, it's not replaced. And then ultimately that's what you end up with there with the, the whole history um, sitting in a sloppy mess on the floor. Um, there's a few roofs here and Oftentimes these do happen in houses, but typically in houses, they'll be covered over. One of these roofs is a house and uh, the ceiling, the underneath of the roof was covered off, um, but it was covered off with um, cardboard boxes um, that were whitewashed. Oftentimes the roofs are boarded as well. Where they happen in outhouses, uh, you'll get much uh, more visibility of how they're made. You'll see pegged trusses there, timber pegs, You'll see, you know, even after a, a century more, the, the quality of the scrolls, and this does differ in places, it must be acknowledged, it depends on the where they're being cut, perhaps who's cutting them and the, the type of ground, but where there's good scrolls that are tight, lots of closely knit growth in them and, and uh, roots. You know, you see them here, um, falling in and out between the battens and they're overlapped. Perhaps sometimes they might have been whitewashed, I'm not quite sure. You see the arrows there are the scallops popping through, but they're solid, they're dry, they're what I would call clean, they scare some people, but you know, they're, they're in brilliant condition and there's no need to lose this, like the, in areas where they're in that condition. There's also a good photograph there. I will acknowledge, of course, many of these roofs, part of them might be bad, you know, there's, uh, but look, you know, with the right people, these skills, whether it be the timber work or even the scraws, um, there was people offering to take me to the bog to show me how to cut a straw. Um, these are not hugely 
impossible things to to repair you know uh, so I would just like to get across the point that these roofs um modest and you know common day as they are we need to mind these because there's there's craft there's scale and there's a, an attractiveness in them um, and potential as a way of illustration we'll look at one more roof and then we shall sail home so this again is in North Kerry this is a, a real beauty and this is located about 900 meters from the current coastline who knows 150 years ago where the coastline lay um well yeah that actually is an 1840s map so um probably still was a reasonable distance from the coast what you have here is a a trusses which are uh, partially unsawn timbers that means they're the rough timbers that would have not been put through a saw um, some of them are, are sawn on some faces and everything is pegged, timber pegs, holes drilled through and timber pegs holding the holes together, nice strong trusses. This is an outhouse at the moment, but was, it's clear to see, it was a house. And what you have here as the battens, as the roof timbers above that is, it appears to me, almost the entire cladding of a boat or a ship. That is ship cladding. From the outside curve of a boat you can see the curves in the timber you can see the pegs at each end of those lengths of wood and sometimes in between and you can see there's kind of a double curve on them sometimes depending on where they were on the boat um it's possibly larch or oak it has a lovely warmth to it um the quality underneath this roof is just beautiful the, the word wreck or a rack would be commonly used in Kerry, perhaps Oscalde, it's, um or AIC, I stand to be corrected. But what that means is generally stuff that's um, resourcefully picked up off the coast. Um, typically in a vernacular heritage roof, you'd see one or two bits of timber that might have found their way from uh, some reuse, some previous reuse, or picked up off the coast, or that there's normally a variance of timbers in a roof. But this is... This is a very special one in that all the timbers came from the one use and presumably the one boat. Um, married to that, then you'll see the Sugon ropes again. They're the straw ropes tying the whole thing together. So just to think about, I suppose, the way this roof works and the way it's every element is working together without nails, without steel, completely dependent on the craft and the workmanship that was put into cutting scrawls, twisting ropes, and the, the knowledge and skill to put that all together. It's a, it's a very special roof. And while they're not all this nice, um, the elements that we can celebrate in looking at this roof, they all exist in other rougher roofs. And I, what I would say is that let people at them that are happy to advise that people into these places that are not uh, spared by unusual arrangements, cobwebs, dirt of a century. You know, they're beautiful things when they're cleaned back and, and cared for. Um, the owners here have been taking care of it. It's well covered, corrugated in good condition. And you'd see on the right hand side there, a little seal foot that was put in because the bottom of the truss was um, decaying where it was sitting in the in the wall. So hopefully we get some in visual enjoyment from that special place and then we can take some lessons from it. Just to wrap up, <clears throat> I couldn't um, avoid dropping in a John Hind picturesque postcard um but in this case i certainly uh don't uh i i'm not wanting uh, this to be enjoyed for its purely uh picturesque quality and um, we don't want to 
treat these houses, I suppose, superficially as a, a, a happy part of the landscape or a pleasing relics of a long lost era. Uh, the point that I want to make is that these were real people and were real houses and there was toil and skill and craft went into them. Uh, as it happens, the cottage in the Kerry Mountains was, it no longer exists, it was at Gortelin, uh near Keel Castle, Maine. And it was the house of my great-grandmother, Bridget O'Connor, who became Bridget O'Mahony. That's her there on the far right. So the, the I suppose, five generations between Bridget and my son Art there assisting me on the survey this summer does seem like a, a long time and they perhaps are generations that we can't feel are close to us. However, if you look at the work that they did, that's that's there for us in some roofs and some houses still. If you look at the, the Sugon rope in my hand up there, that is holding roofs together and the strength is maintained in that um, over that huge length of time. So while there's great respect for ancestors and for family history in Kerry, um, we need to make the leap and see what we have left and the problems, the, the dirty roofs and the half falling down uh, problem roofs that we need to address. We need to see these as real opportunities and real heritage that uh, it's not always easy to deal with, but a beautiful opportunity at the same time. In Kerry, um, there's great craft, there's great creativity, and there's great skill. And I think it's exactly those things we need um, in addressing our remaining patch heritage so that we so that we reuse the little that's left and um, for good and uh, to uh, maintain that aspect of our heritage. Uh, all that is, remains to be said is to thank a few people. Um, thanks to Victoria McCarthy, Kerry County Council, who commissioned this survey. Uh, thanks to my colleagues, Joe Flahav, Ronan Broston, Marta Deneen, and my son Art. Uh, special thanks to Marta for her beautiful sketches that have illustrated this talk. Uh, she has been diligently sketching away for several months while listening to Korean pop music. So thanks to Marta, thanks to Richard, uh, Thatcher, to Jim O'Sullivan, my fixer in North Kerry, and to Wild Atlantic Way Construction. Uh, please do get in contact. We would like to um, uh, continue the conversation and help people as they decide what to do with uh, heritage buildings and Thatch. Um, I'm happy to talk to anybody at any time. My email is there. And likewise, uh, Victoria's email is there, Victoria being the Architectural Conservation Officer in Kerry County Council. I hope people enjoyed that tour. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>